Hi everybody, Danielle from Glembo coming from home for our Glembo from Home program. Today we're going to be focusing on two of our gallery spaces from the museum, uh, building the railway and our newcomers gallery. Uh, both of these galleries focus on the building of the railway and then the settlement of the West. We'll do a bit of a tour of the spaces and then we're going to dive into our suitcase and see what we can discover and uncover about the family that came and settled settled in this area of southern Alberta. So stick with me and we'll be back in a minute. Hi everyone, here we are at the Building the Railway Gallery or our Canadian Pacific Railway Gallery, the CPR. This gallery focuses on the building of the CPR beginning in 1881 when the Canadian Pacific Railway was founded. At that time, Sir John A. Macdonald was Prime Minister and had promised all of the provinces that were part of Confederation that he would build a railway that would tie the entire country together, joining provinces both old and new from coast to coast. At that time, a man named William Van Horn was hired as president of the CPR, and he promised that a railway could be built in five years. Now, as many of us know, Canada is a massive country and to finish a railroad in five years was quite a feat. But through perseverance, hard work, and many, many thousands of workers toiling hard through extreme conditions and laying approximately five miles of track per day, Van Horn fulfilled his promise and the railway was finished in November of 1885, with the last spike being driven in Kregalaki, British Columbia. The first thing Van Horn did when the railway was finished was started an advertising campaign to bring wealthy tourists out to Canada's west. He commissioned artists to ride out on the train and paint the scenery and landscapes to use in the ads as well as in two major hotels the CPR had built. The Banff Springs and Chateau Lake Louise were home to many of the large scale paintings that hung on the walls for visitors to see. Under Van Horn's direction, these hotels were built to offer wealthy tourists high-end accommodations and adventures galore. Mr. Van Horn is known for his statement, If we can't export the scenery, we'll import the tourists. The second ad campaign Mr. Van Horn wanted to focus on was to bring people to the west of our newly formed country. The CPR played an important role in settling Western Canada and began advertising for new immigrants to come west by selling them farmland for a very cheap price. An advertising campaign started and was promoted throughout the world in places including Britain, Russia and Ukraine. In the early 1900s, the CPR advertised ready-made farms. They came with a house, a barn, a well and a pump some fences and sections of the land that were already plowed and ready to plant seeds. Now, although these advertisements looked beautiful and ideal, when the new owners arrived, it was not as easy as it all seemed from the posters. Imagine you arrive in the middle of winter in Canada. It's snowy, it's cold, new language, new surroundings. It was a very, very difficult beginning to a new life. When the new settlers were getting ready to travel to Canada, each family was only allowed to bring one trunk with them on the trip. Imagine if your entire family's belongings had to fit into one trunk. What would you bring? Think of the things that would be important to you. What would be important to your family? Stay with us and in a moment we'll open up one of these suitcases to uncover who these new immigrants were. Okay, so let's see what we can uncover and discover about the people who owned this suitcase, the immigrants that came over to Canada. We might be able to find out approximately the year as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a few things out. We're going to take a really good look at them and again go through our same lines of questioning, what we think it is, 
Uh, what does it tell us about these people? So I'm going to start with this spur. So this is a spur. And this is a very small spur. So we're guessing, we're going to guess that this might be for a uh, fancy horse, a smaller horse. In here we have a um, quill, which is a calligraphy pen. So you would dip the ink into this, uh, or dip this end into the ink, and then you would be able to write with it. So that tells us a little bit about um, that this person might be educated, that they know how to write. Um, we have here a pipe. This is quite a nice pipe, actually, a little bit of a fancy pipe. Hopefully you can see it there. So we've got a spur, a quill, and a pipe. Hmm. Now, what's this? This is the end of a branding iron. So this would be the mark of the owners of the brand. And what they would do is this would have a long uh, end that was really, really long. And they would heat this end up right here. And then they would use that to brand the cattle. So we've got something to do with cattle and we've got um, horse spurs there. So I'm starting to wonder if this maybe is um, somebody that has either a, a ranch or a farm, something like that. These were called spats. So can you see that? I hope so. Spats were actually used uh, by gentlemen again. So we've got someone who's educated. We've got quite a fancy pipe and now we've got these spats. These spats were to protect your shoes. So if you were a really, um, if you were on the farm or the ranch all the time, you would have been wearing cowboy boots. You wouldn't have been wearing spats like this. These were for gentlemen. So this gives us a clue that these people potentially might, uh, this person, might have a little bit of money. They're educated, they've got these spats. Uh, this is another indication. So what this is, is actually a, it's for the collar of your shirt. And it, it was so that your collar looked like it was pressed and stayed up. And that's actually another indication, another clue that we might have a gentleman here that we're working with. And also quite a fancy um, shaving brush. Again, probably something that a gentleman would have. Now this dish here, this is actually has a lid and a bottom. Now what's important about things like this is that these types of things can give you really good clues if you really start looking. So if we look closely, this is actually porcelain, which is, was quite expensive in those days. Um, it's got some beautiful um, artwork on it. And if we look at the bottom, we can find a clue. Let's just turn it the right way. We can find a clue about where it's from potentially, so, or where it was made at least. And this says that it was hand painted in Hungary. Is this a good clue? Maybe. So I'll put that on there. Now, one of the most important things that we'll get the best clues from is some things that are going to be in these packages like this. And these are photographs that are included in these suitcases. So when we look, we can see that there's a photo of, looks like a gentleman. That's a pretty nice house. The photo is black and white. That might give us a clue about some timelines for them. We've got a Canadian Pacific Railway. Um, this is actually the top of a translation guide. And it's a bit hard to see here, but it says Hungarian English. So again, we've got a second clue that this, these people might, may be from Hungary. And then we've got a picture of um, some horses and a ranch. 
So we've got cattle in the background and some nice horses in the front. So we had some good clues in the suitcase and now we're backing that up with these photographs. And then we've got some um, photos of the ranch where they're actually doing some branding. So we're going to, um, and then a car, that's a good clue as well. There's one more thing in this little bag here. Let's see what we've got. Oh yes, this is the actual translation guide. So you can see it's falling apart a little bit. We gotta be really careful with this stuff. But this is the guide that the photo was, was um, of that we saw. So it's a Hungarian English translation guide from the Canadian Pacific Railway. And if we look inside really carefully, um, it's got words that we can translate from Hungarian into English. So I'm going to tell you the story about these men. This, all of these artifacts here are based on a set of brothers, two brothers who were called the Savasis. They were actually from Hungary. They were born into royalty. So when they were over in Hungary, they had uh, a palace. They were very, very wealthy. When they got old enough, their dream was that they wanted to be cowboys. And so when they decided they wanted to come to Canada, they sold off a whole bunch of their things at home, left everything behind as far as being royalty, and they came to Canada and started uh, a ranch just outside of Calgary. And they became cowboys. And that was their goal. <laughs> so these are two, uh, this is uh, one um, group of brothers that's featured in our newcomers gallery. We've also got James Ma Poi. He's from China. We have um, the Gushels who are from Ukraine and came over and had a photography studio in um, Coleman and Blairmore. These are some of our mavericks that we call them. So that means that they're people that really sort of did some amazing things when they got here, pushed the limits a little bit and lived outside of the box, started their own businesses and really left a mark on in Southern Alberta. So I hope that you enjoyed our suitcase opening today and we'll do this again soon. We'll see you next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Okay, bye.